Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Wrong Man is a 1956 docudrama directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and it stars Henry Fonda and Vera Miles. The film was drawn from the true story of an innocent man charged with a crime. As it was described in the book, The True Story of Christopher Emanuel Ballestero by Maxwell Anderson. And also in the magazine article, A Case of Identity, which was published in Life magazine in June of 1953. It is one of the few Hitchcock films based on a true story and whose plot closely follows the real-life events that happened. The movie has been cited as a real influence on Martin Scorsese's movie, Taxi Driver. The Hitchcock cameo for this film, which is a thing that he always did in his films, he pops up at some point in every film he does. But in this movie, he appears in a different format. He is only shown in silhouette in a darkened studio just before the credits at the beginning of the film, announcing that this story is a true one. Originally, he intended to be seen as a customer that walks into the stork club, but he edited himself out of the final print of the movie. The storyline for the film goes that Christopher Ballenstero, known as Manny to his friends, is a string bassist, a devoted husband and father, and a practicing Catholic. His $85 a week gig playing in a jazz combo at the Stork Club is barely enough for him to make ends meet. Things become a little more difficult when they encounter some major dental bills for his wife, Rose, and the process of how they're going to pay them. Manny decides to see if he can borrow money off of Rose's life insurance policy. But when he enters the insurance office, he is identified by some of the clerks there as the man who held up the office twice a few months earlier. Manny cooperates with the police as he has nothing to hide. The more that Manny cooperates, the more guilty he appears to the police. With the help of Frank O'Connor, the attorney that they hire to try to prove Manny's innocence, it seems that if they manage to prove this and find out who the actual holdup man is, the situation has caused irreparable damage to the Ballestero family itself. Many of the scenes for the movie were filmed in Jackson Heights, the neighborhood where Manny and his wife lived and where he was accused of committing these robberies. Most of the prison scenes were filmed among the convicts in a New York City prison in Queens. The courthouse was located at the corner of Catalpa Avenue and 64th Street in Ridgewood. And in the scene in the prison where Henry Fonda is first taken there, you can tell it's a real prison. As he's being led to his cell, you can hear one of the actual inmates yell out, What'd they get you for, Henry? And then you hear a bunch of prisoners laughing in the background. The other thing that was real in this filming was that they used the actual cell that Manny was incarcerated in. And they also had actual people that were involved to some extent in what happened to Manny, usually being a witness. The caretakers at the country inn they go to was one of these occasions. And the sanitarium where Manny's wife was committed was the real place. As much as Alfred Hitchcock hated filming his movies on location, he felt that the authenticity was crucial to this film due to its real-life elements that are stranger than all of the fiction. This marks the only time that Henry Fonda worked with the famed director. Fonda's close friend Jimmy Stewart worked with Hitchcock four times. Fonda was over the age of 50 at the time of filming, playing a character who says he's 38. The real Manny was 43 at the time of his arrest. Keep your eyes peeled 
and you'll see some real quick performances by two actresses that went on to become fairly famous. One of those would be Tuesday Weld. She appears as one of the young giggling girls when she was just 13 years old. And with her, you'll also see Bonnie Franklin, who is best known for her portrayal of the mother, Anne Romano, in the American 70s TV series, One Day at a Time. This was Hitchcock's final film for Warner Brothers. It completed a contract commitment that had begun with two films produced for Transatlantic Pictures and released by Warner Brothers, the first being Rope from 1948 and Under Capricorn in 1949. After this movie, Hitchcock returned to Paramount Pictures to continue his career. The sad thing about this entire story is it's based on truth. Manny did go to try to get some money on his wife's life insurance plan, and he was taken into custody after two employees of the insurance office identified him as the man who robbed the office of a total of $271 during two robberies the previous year. As painstakingly recounted in the film, Manny was awaiting his second trial. The first had ended abruptly after a juror made a remark presuming his guilt in open court. In waiting for his second trial, the actual culprit was apprehended during an attempt to rob a deli and bore a uncanny resemblance to Manny. Under intense questioning by the cops, he admitted to committing more than 40 robberies and claimed that he had planned to come forward if Manny was convicted at his second trial. What made this case especially poignant and attracted national attention is what happened to Manny's wife, Rose. You see, she blamed herself for Manny's arrest because he was trying to borrow money to help her get dental work done that she needed. All of this stress caused her to have a nervous breakdown. The mother of two young sons remained institutionalized until September of 1955. Manny stated that after all this, they had to start their life completely over again after he was cleared and they had to move the family to Florida after his wife was released from the mental institution. Balanstero sued the city and the insurance company for $500,000 for false arrest, and he settled out of court with them for $7,000. He did sell the rights to the film and his story for $22,000, but he told the newspapers at the time that most of this was used to repay the loans that he had incurred because of Rose's institutionalization. Manny eventually went back to work as a musician, and it's said that he loved this movie. He eventually died in a nursing home in 1998. But Rose, who had died 14 years earlier, never fully recovered. And I don't think anybody quite realizes what this family went through and the suffering that they incurred because of this false identification. Henry Fonda is amazing in this movie. You need to watch it just to see his performance. It's a typical Hitchcock film, and I'm sure you'll love it if you watch it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.